Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I have a few things that I want to get done in the garden. I really want to start planting out one of the flower gardens that I'm going to have for spring and summer. So I thought I would share with you what I'm planting in there. I have a bunch of seedlings behind me over there that are growing very nicely and some of them are ready to plant out. It's a little windy today, so I do have my mic on um, and I'm going to share with you what the plan is for that little patch over there. Like always, I have a lot more seedlings than I do space. So it's gonna be pretty jam packed, but I'm sure we'll make something work over there. And then after that, Scott is going to come down and help me film and harvest a bunch of things from the garden. So hopefully it's gonna be a fun garden with me and harvest vlog this afternoon. So these are the majority of the seedlings that I have. I planted these um, I planted these and filmed a little bit of it on an Instagram live a few weeks ago and a lot of them have started to sprout and grow really well. Obviously I need to pot up a lot of them. This is all of my tomatoes and some pigeon pea. That looks like a dahlia. That's not a pigeon pea. <laughs> um, so yeah, today I'll probably pot up some tomatoes as well and maybe my rosellas. I'm super excited to grow rosellas again to make some rosella jam and I'm actually going to be planting these around the edges of my vegetable gardens so hopefully have a really nice edible hedge um, with the rosella plants. These were all from saved seeds that I saved in um, another video as well that I'll link down below. But yeah, we have a complete different assortment of things in here. We have lots of zinnias that I really want to plant today. Uh, same with some poppies. I've got a borage here that I might let get a little bigger before I plant it out. Some everlasting daisies back there. And some things that aren't um, sprouted or big enough to grow or big enough to be planted. Um, I've got some Cape gooseberries here that I'll be planting um, obviously not now <laughs> when they get a little bit bigger um, same with the sea celery this is a native australian herb one of my favorites because it just it tastes exactly like parsley or the kind of tips of celery and i'm going to be planting this kind of around the flowers as well to kind of have a really edible slash beautiful patch um, in the vegetable garden so i'm going to go through all of these and pick out what i'm going to plant today Okay, this is the selection of plants that I picked out, mainly zinnias because zinnias just grow so, so fast. Um, and now is a great time to get them in the ground. And hopefully within a few months, we'll have some nice blooms. So the first ones that I picked out are polar bear. These are a really gorgeous white zinnia. I've also got peppermint stick, which I'm gonna plant next to polar bear because I think white and the kind of yellow and white will look really great together. I've also got, um, I think this is called Luminosa Bright Pink Zinnia, um, Envy, which is one of my favorites, a really gorgeous full uh, green flower. And the last Zinnia that I have is Cherry Queen, really, really gorgeous red one. I've also got um, just some really small seedlings, but I found I've planted um, these out before at this size. These are Everlasting Daisies um, and they're really, really hardy plants. So I'm going to be planting some of those and two different poppies that I have. I've got um, Californian orange and a um, ballerina mix, which the germination between these two was very different. Orange was amazing with germination and I put about the same in for the ballerina mix and I have three little plants. So, 
So the orange is definitely a success. <laughs> So this is the end veggie patch where I'm going to be having all of my flowers with kind of a mix of herbs. Um, as you can see, the garden is very full right now. I am planning on doing a garden tour as well to show you what's happening, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> so I'm going to space these plants out where I think I want them to go. I've also got some broccoli here um, that is obviously not ready to be taken out yet. I think it is yeah it's starting to get some little florets on it um, but these will definitely just be a few more weeks but that's okay because all of my other seedlings aren't ready to be planted out yet um, and then I do have some uh, red onions in here and some tatsoi that I had left over. I did also prep this bed really well. Um, I've got to see, I've got to remember what I did. On it, some of it, I um, spread out some worm castings and um, just compost from a different garden bed that I had left over. But on the majority of um, this bed here, I spread out some composted chicken manure. Oh, I did some uh, biochar and wood ash. Those two are really great for flower beds and the biochar for that I made in a previous video. And I also put a really good dose of the, I can't remember what it's called, I think it's the Rich Grow Organic Vegetable Food. Hands down, one of my favorite fertilizers to use in the garden, vegetable patch, um, feeding fruit trees. It is one of the best fertilizers around. And I really love that there is such a great um, organic fertilizer out there which I feel like Australia is definitely lacking. There are quite a few smaller companies that I really want to try out, but yeah, I always go for Rich Grow because I know I can get it basically anywhere. And then I've also covered it all with sugarcane mulch as well, my favorite mulch to use. All right, so I'm just going to grab the plants and put them where I think I want them to go. <laughs> All right, so the garden is all planted now. They are very small seedlings, and if some of them don't grow, it's perfectly fine. Um, but I just kind of need a lot of my seedling trays to plant some more seedlings um, to just get everything done that I need to do. So the bed is here behind me, and I'll turn you around and show you where and why I place things where I did. But before I have a visitor, who's visiting me right now. He's come down to say hello, and I know everyone loves to see Shadow in the videos, so he's come to say hello to you. Do you wanna say, okay. Yeah, so before we say hello, we need to do a roll in the dirt, apparently. Look at you. Whoa, whoa. Wow, well, that's gonna be lovely to clean in the house, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, whoa. Okay, well, I'll, I'll clean you up before we go in. Clean you up before we have your dinner. The happiest garden cat ever. <laughs> oh, so cute. The hard thing is I'm gonna be keeping Shadow out of this area. Okay, so my plan for here is this is the side that we look at it from. So this is the very end of the garden bed. So I wanted something really bright and happy and cheery down here to look at and to kind of be a border for the vegetable garden. 
And so I've kind of placed the plants in order of height. So up the very back, I've planted a row of the everlasting daisies, which actually get quite tall. And this is just a mix. So I'm not too sure what color, which is fine. I kind of just want a really nice green backdrop for all of the other flowers. And then I've decided to kind of do like a little bit of a meandering line of the other two different flowers that I have. So I've planted two uh, zinnia plants of each type that I have here today. Um, so first off, I print, planted some bright pinks. Um, the next is the cherry queens. I think pink and red will go together. And then we're moving down to, yeah, the polar bears here, peppermint stick, which this one in particular, I'll put an overlay of what this looked like, of what this one looked like. It was the strongest seedling that I had. And I am pretty sure that is down to the fact that it just had a big clump of worm castings in that particular cell. There was also a worm in there, which indicated that there was a lot of life. But yeah, if you can definitely use uh, worm castings in your seed raising mix, because that is the strongest plant. And I know that it's definitely because of the worm castings in that cell. So then behind the broccoli, I planted the Envy. And then going back, I just had um, two random orange poppies that I just put in the corner here, just to see if they like a little bit more shade. Um, but then on the other side, I've kind of done the same thing where I've done a little bit more of a meandering line of the mix of poppies up the end there to kind of match with the pink color uh, and then all of the gorgeous orange throughout here. I really like doing um, more meandering lines and rather than straight formal lines in the garden. It just creates a lot more depth to a space, particularly because this garden bed isn't that big. I want to be able to fit a bunch of plants in here. This is just the start of what I'm going to be planting in this area, but I want it to be really full and fill out really well. And to do that, it's much easier to plant in different meandering lines, to be able to fit in different pockets of more plants as these ones grow. Um, and if they grow different rates or different sizes, then I can fill in all of the gaps. Cool. So I think Scott is coming down soon so we can get in here and harvest some veggies. Um, but before that, I just need to water all of these in and then go and grab some buckets because we've got a lot to pick today.
down with this with the with this. Yep. So this is this afternoon's little harvest. Um, not as big as some of the other ones that we've done, but we don't really need a lot of veggies in the house right now. And I like to just pick things that I need um, so I can have on hand. One of my favorite things that we picked was these gorgeous beetroots. I've been making one of my favorite foods, which is a, um, a beetroot and caramelized onion tart. Absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to be making some beetroot hummus as well. These carrots, which are the all seasons carrots, have been producing really, really well and they're all starting to get quite nice and large now. So I'm going to be um, working through harvesting all of those over the next few weeks because we do have another patch uh, growing as well. But we did get a lot of cayenne chilies, cayenne chilies. This plant has actually just gone completely bonkers and we have had so many chilies which is great but i'm not a massive fan of spice so um, i have actually been drying these and blending them up into a chili powder which we're going to probably use a lot more than just eating fresh chilies and then for dinner tonight i'm making a pesto so i grabbed some rocket which i'm going to add to a basil pesto um, and also just some broccoli that we will have on the side We've been eating broccoli quite a lot this week, which I am not complaining about because homegrown fresh broccoli is just absolutely delicious. Pretty much every second or third day, I'm harvesting um, calendula flowers to make my calendula salve. I'm gonna be making a really, really big batch of that. And then I need fresh flowers on my desk. So I just picked a nice little posy of flowers um, with a mixture of lavender, um, some stock flowers which the smell of stock flowers is so so strong so I've only got um, two little flowers so I've only got two stalks of those um, a mixture of different snapdragons um, and calendula as well just to brighten up my desk space so I really hope you enjoyed this video seeing um, planting out the flower patch and all of this gorgeous food here that we have grown all organic using permaculture principles. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for lots more garden content. And until my next video, happy gardening everyone. Bye.